SME Souk podcast brought to you by Rackbank Business. Your business matters. SMEs are the lifeline of UAE's economy. Whether it's a grocery store in Abu Dhabi, a thriving online business in Dubai, or a manufacturer on the hills of Ras Al Khaimah, you keep all the seven Emirates on the move. We proudly present you Ragbank SME Soup podcast series. You're listening to the SME Souk podcast. I'm Brandy Scott, and for today's episode, we're going to be speaking to the CEO of Rack Bank, Rahil Ahmed. Rahil, thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure to be with you, Brandy. And I'm really looking forward to getting a bigger picture view from you, the macro view, if you like, using your experience and your day-to-day visibility of what's going on in the economy to look at where the the opportunities are for the SME sector. Let's start exactly there. Where is the UAE economy at the moment as you see it? So the UAE economy is doing very well. It grew very fast last year. It continues to grow very well this year as well. The oil GDP's growth has slowed down a little bit, but the non-oil GDP, which is naturally very important for SMEs, is growing in a pretty rapid fashion. And we see this trend continuing into 2024 as well. What does that mean for the small and medium business? Where do they fit into that? So both globally and in the UAE, the SMEs play a really big contribution to the economy. Uh, So if you think about it, there are almost 550,000 SME companies in the UAE by last count. The vision is to get them to a million by 2030. Uh, From the data that we have, they contribute almost 80% of the private sector companies and almost 84% of the private sector workforce. So a big, a big impact of SMEs in the UAE local economy. Well, you mentioned the government's targets there. From just what you see in the bank, the number of new accounts that are being opened in the business space, for example, what's your gut feel about the rate at which they're increasing at the moment? So I think post-pandemic, UAE has become, the, the growth of SMEs in the UAE has really accelerated. And we are seeing companies, entrepreneurs, uh, people coming from all over the world because UAE is becoming much more business friendly. It always was, but it's even better now. And, uh, and some of the rules, regulations, laws, and the enablement that the government is facilitating uh, are, uh, are, are like a magnet for SMEs and entrepreneurs to come and work from here. So are you seeing an increase in the number of new accounts that are being opened for smaller businesses? Absolutely, we are. So we are seeing a 20 to 30 percent growth in our business. But if you talk to the licensing authorities, our partners as Rackers, they are also seeing similar number of growth in the number of companies opening in the, in the licensing authorities and trade zones as well. What does that mean for employment opportunities here in the UAE? Yeah. So I think uh, it does create opportunities, uh, depends on what type of businesses they are coming into. Um, the three big ones that we see are services, tech, and e-commerce. Uh, so naturally, tech and e-commerce, but, uh, they do create employment, but perhaps not as much. But clearly, the services sector uh, creates a lot more employment opportunities in the country. So as you are seeing globally as well, um, right now, um, Attracting skills and holding on to them is actually a challenge both for big banks and SMEs alike because there is not enough skill in the market in some areas. Can we dig into that trend a little bit more? Because that's really interesting, the areas in which you see new businesses being sure. created and why. Yeah. So as I said, the, the three mega trends that we are seeing in the, from our data in the UAE, one is services, right? So UAE was always a very good trading hub for people to use UAE as a trading hub. But because of the growth in the local population, the local economy, tourism, more residents coming in the country, the real estate uh, developing, we're seeing a lot more SMEs getting into the services sector uh, to contribute to the local economy. So around 50 to 60% of new accounts, at least that we see, are in the local service sector. And while trading is still there, Uh, but it is not as big as it used to be five years ago. So that's the first one. The second is e-commerce, right? So as e-commerce is booming, you're seeing all the e-commerce platform, both global and some homegrown from here. Um, You know, SMEs have much more platform to do many more things without having to do a full setup themselves. So we are seeing a lot more growth, a lot more entrepreneurship because the barriers to entry, the barriers you need to set up if you have a, you know, a dream, an idea that you want to test uh, is much easier to implement now than perhaps it was five years ago. So that is two. And then naturally tech, a lot of people talk about fintech. 
but we think that you know ed tech health tech uh, you know uh, climate cop 28 is coming so a lot about a lot of technology about uh, you know how we make a greener planet esg we are also seeing those type of companies getting attracted and being here okay we're going to go back to the sustainability sure. bit in a in a while but i'm interested in what you're seeing in terms of business models we've got mm-hmm. new types of companies coming in are they yeah. operating differently yeah i think uh, absolutely yes uh, so technology regardless of what type of business is uh, absolutely is playing a much bigger role in the business model setups online presence e-commerce having very good digital presence is becoming a key doesn't matter what type of company you you are creating what type of idea you have you need to be there in the social world in the digital world and if uh, actually in, in fact if you see the surveys that's one of the biggest challenge a lot of the SMEs have is to how to get online and how to do more effective social media and digital marketing as they promote their products and services uh, and then second is data and the use of data is is a big trend and the third one is that uh, they don't need to set up everything themselves so the business models of using platforms um, amazon naturally does it very well they have a big sellers market uh, so you can go and use that platform uh, but there are many many others here home grown as well as big ones where companies can go and set up without having to have the whole infrastructure around them themselves and that enables more entrepreneurship where are the risks that come with that? I'm thinking cyber security yeah. here. If yeah. you are online, more of your operations, more of your back end is yeah. online, what does that mean? Yeah, so I think you've, you've abso- you're absolutely right. So, so one of the top risks, I think, for SMEs right now is cyber security fraud. Uh, because with innovation, with digitization, the fraudsters also invest a lot of money in that, right? So, so it is it is a big issue globally in the UAE, and banks like us have a big role to play in the education, the awareness, the prevention of that from happening. But I think the SMEs themselves have to invest a lot in that. So that's risk number one. The risk number two is naturally we are in a high inflation, high interest rate environment. So it's very easy to get carried away and over leverage yourself and borrow more than you can afford. So cash management, because you know many entrepreneurs have great ideas, but how you manage your cash, how you manage your inflows versus your outflows, can you price your product to make sure that you know the the, the cost of ingredients that you need to then make it uh, make it profitable uh, is is in your command. Uh, that I think is another risk that is emerging because we have inflation, because we have high, high oil prices, and because we have high interest rates. So they have to be very careful about not over leveraging themselves. Right. Well, while we're talking logistics, let's go mm-hmm. through some of the the biggest challenges that SMEs traditionally face and what's happening to them here. Let's start with the cost of entry, the barriers to entry. How do you see that evolving at the moment? So I think the barriers to entry are getting less and less, right? And some of it is driven by the very good fiscal policies and the laws and regulations in the country. Uh, you know, so 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 the enablement now many many businesses you can have 100% ownership in in on onshore as well, which was not the case a few years ago. Um, the enablement that the government provides, uh, both in terms of facilitation, in terms of ease of uh, ease of company setup, has has significantly reduced. Um, so those barriers are going away. Naturally, we are in a world of much higher compliance and AML and safety from a banking perspective. So I do know that banking accounts still continue to be sometimes a pain point, although it is becoming less and less. The Central Bank of UAE has now come up with the whole market SME conduct framework, a customer protection framework, which also makes banking easier for uh, for companies. So my sense is from that perspective, things have become much easier. As I said to you, because we have so many platforms that the businesses can hook on to them, from that perspective also, the, you know, the, 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 the amount of things you have to think about before you can launch a company has become much less because you can go and switch on to a platform uh, which can provide a lot of services for you. Let's talk about that banking relationship. Yeah. I mean, you obviously have <coughs> a lot of yeah. small and medium customers. It's one of the things that Rack Bank is yeah. known for, being an SME-friendly bank. How do banks use that to their advantage? How do you take what a bank is offering and really leverage it? Yeah. So I think uh, at the heart of what at least we are trying to do, and I think it's true for other banks as well, is you become a partner. You, you shift from a banker to a partner. And you become 
involved and more entrenched into the success of the entrepreneur and the company. And how do you do that, right? One is you make banking very seamless and very easy. But then you go beyond banking, right? So yes, we do digital transactions and making ease of cash for more, you know, ease of payments and providing payment facilities. But how do you go beyond banking, you know, to create an ecosystem where all the things related to money can be done easily by your customers? So whether it's payments, whether it's invoicing, whether it's payroll, you know, paying money to your employees, how do you start integrating those services seamlessly into banking becomes important. The second thing I would say, and this comes out very uh, heavily in the survey is, uh, surveys also, is that uh, SMEs still look for expertise and advice, right? So it's not about just the pain of the banking relationship, it's also give me expertise, give me advice. Not everybody knows how to build a good credit history. Now we have credit bureaus, right? So your access to finance is very dependent on how you manage your cash flows. Do Can we help you to remind when your payments are due so that your check doesn't get bounced or your payment doesn't get bounced? Because if that happens, you your credit bureau gets, records it now. So the bank has to play a much more partner role. It has to think beyond banking and <clears throat> help you to facilitate money management in the broadest sense. And I think we have to be there for our customers with uh, with expertise related to their business segments, as opposed to having a one size uh, banking relationship. You mentioned cash flow earlier, mm -hmm. and I mean that's one of the things that comes up time and time again is something that can sink yeah. small companies. Just mm -hmm. having the orders, maybe having everything in place, but just not having seen the cash to to see them through. How can you help with that, and how can they prevent that becoming a problem? Yeah, I think a lot of it, and you know, we, we, we've discussed that VAT is coming and tax is coming, and maybe we'll spend a couple of minutes on that separately. But uh, the discipline of cash flow management, the banks can help, right? Uh, if if we know how much your in uh, you know typical uh, incoming uh, revenue is and how much is going to go out, we can help create a forecast for you. We can alert you to what payments you see recurring at what times of the month. It's not that much different to personal financing sometimes in small companies as well. Um, so we can play a role of, uh, you know, using data, using insights, using AI, using analytics to provide companies with much more clear forecasting of their inflows and outflows and help them with that. Uh, and that's why I think banks have to evolve in terms of the type of services they're providing to their customers. Yeah, but we also need to communicate with you. I mean, you mentioned advice. Mm -hmm. At what stage should someone come to you and, and flag up a, a worry, a potential problem, or ask for advice? Yeah, so I think uh, we try to uh, manage the relationships on a very proactive basis. So it's, it's uh, you know, we do try and make sure that both digitally and through webinars, through expert sessions, uh, you know, if you go on SME Souk, it has its own YouTube channel or its SME Tube channel <laughs> uh, where you will find a lot of advice. We are doing a lot of webinars on what does corporate tax means for customers, right? So I mean, we, I think we have one going on very, very soon. Uh, which trade license authority to choose? How do you compare? those so so a lot of information we are making available both digitally through expert panel interviews but then also making sure that our relationship managers and advisors are always there for customers and they are proactively helping and guiding them as opposed to reactively servicing their needs okay you've mentioned so many things mm -hmm. that are big headlines at the moment so I'm just going to throw them to you as words mm -hmm. and I want you to put them in the SME context okay. for me and let's start with corporate tax yeah. So I think positive. Uh, it does, yes, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's going to create a little bit more tax, but we are still one of the most business-friendly countries. We are still the one of the lowest taxes in the world. Uh, I think it will create the financial discipline that companies need for two things. One is for their own cash flow management, which you mentioned a bit earlier. And second is it'll make financing easier because you have more systematic way of recording your income statement and balance sheet, which is something that naturally many SMEs don't focus or don't have the time to focus on, and that sometimes impede their access to finance. Okay, sustainability, particularly with COP coming up. Yeah. I think SMEs have a big role to play in it in two ways. One is naturally their products and services that could help us to get to a greener planet, but also using sustainability as a USP for the products and services they create because uh, many things are getting commoditized, right? A battery is a battery is a battery, right? But how do you create more uh, USP and, and uh, pull for your product? How do you create premium value? 
And uh, as we see, there is a big trend in, in consumers to, to be able to pay premium for more sustainable services and products. And I think SMEs can play a big role uh, domestic sourcing, for example, domestic mm -hmm. production, right? Um, there is a bit of deglobalization, de big brands happening where people will pay a little bit premium for that mom and pop shop around the corner because they want to support the local production, the local economy. And I think if you think about sustainability in that way as well, uh, SMEs can play a big role. And I think one other very promising thing that we see is a lot of UAE national entrepreneurs uh, creating, uh, you know, finding. Uh, it uh, rewarding to go and create new business opportunities for themselves. You mentioned tech, so mm -hmm. generative AI. Yes, generative AI is a blessing and a and a and a risk at the same time, right? So uh, there is on the dark web uh, a fraudsters version of G Chat GPT as well. I can create fake emails much more easily using generative AI as well. But by and large, I think it is how you use it and how you incorporate it in your business model. Um, at the same time, I know you can go and create a very nice marketing campaign and a jingle using generative AI as well, right? So it has very positive benefits for, uh, for SMEs and entrepreneurs because it augments their own energy, their own um, passion and their own ideas and can be almost like a side buddy to them in terms of helping them in many things. Blockchain. So blockchain uh, relevant, I think it's one of the more sustainable long-term trend that we will see in technology adoption. Uh, easier to set up companies, do business with digital contracts, smart contracts, uh, is still catching up in terms of other use cases, but I think we'll see much more adoption by SMEs in the coming years. And FinTech, that's my last word throw at you. Yeah. So I think fintechs uh, 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 creating a lot of buzz, uh, $2 billion worth of funding in the last two years for fintechs in this country. Uh, and uh, But I think we should talk about tech and not just fintech because as I said, it's ed tech, it's insure tech, it's health tech, and it's fintech, right? So I think there's a lot happening in that tech space. Now funding is interesting. Yeah. What are you seeing in terms of which term, which companies attract the funding and which don't? What's the secret source? What makes the difference? Yeah, so I think like anything else, you need to have an idea which creates, which uh, which solves a problem or has a need, right? So you have to start with that and I think that's a very important question. In today's generative AI tech enabled world, it is very easy to get carried away and launch something which doesn't have a need or doesn't have a value, right? Uh, so, so funding I think comes when you have a disruptive idea that is differentiated and that is as a need. The good news for SMEs is that there's much more variety of funding available from crowdsourcing to PE to, you know, angel investors to naturally banks to, uh, to many other types of lendings now. So I don't think funding is a problem as far as, as long as there is a strong use case um, that can get adapted uh, when you launch an idea. What in general is the <clears throat> difference between the SMEs that make it and those that don't? I mean, you must see all yeah. stories. Yeah. What separates those that, that grow from, from those that don't take off? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm sure you know this, but 20% uh, of new businesses fail in the first year. Only half make it past the fifth year, typically, if you look at it globally. The ones that make it, I think, I, I would say four things, right? One is you absolutely need a problem statement and a unique need that you're solving. We talked about that. The second is that you need to create a brand and an experience that people can uh, see and feel consistently. Sometimes you have very brilliant people, they have a great idea, but as they start expanding, you know, the, the consistency of the service, the quality, when the, when, the, when the sort of the entrepreneurial leader gets stretched in many ways, uh, they are not able to, uh, l the rest of the employees invest in the rest of the employees to provide the same level of service. So consistency of experience, building a brand and a brand image is extremely important, right? Uh, there are lots and lots of companies doing the same things. How do you differentiate? So the whole social media, having the online presence, having digital marketing available becomes very important. And the fourth is uh, your discipline on your cash flows and your financial management, right? 
not over leveraging, not over borrowing, making sure your, you know, your uh, ambition and the orders you are taking, you are able to supply them. You have the funding, understanding your supply chain if you are in products and services, and and those who I think think through this and manage it well, uh, the the chance of success is much greater. Okay, well, let's finish by going straight back to the start. I asked you where the UAE economy is at the moment. Where do you see it going, and what does that mean for the SME sector? Yeah. So, I, as I said, I think UAE economy is in a very good shape. I think it both oil and non-oil will continue to grow. Uh, UAE is attracting, uh, you know, record numbers of tourists, but I think record number of residents as well. This is becoming a destination for people to come and live. You know, we are focusing on retirement. We are focusing on young entrepreneurs. We are focusing on the high net worth individuals. All these create huge amount of opportunities for entrepreneurs and SMEs. Uh, and I think there will be new areas that people have not thought through yet, uh, which will become much more important. So I mentioned retirees, right? So, I mean, there is a whole uh, slew of industries and services that retirees will need, which may be slightly different from the younger population who have been coming here only to live and work and then go back to their countries. Um, I think you will see a lot more domestic entrepreneurship uh, coming up as, as, as you know, the, the, the locally sourced or the local brands become much more relevant in this market as opposed to the global brands only. So I think there is a very exciting uh, runway ahead for SMEs and, and for companies to think and, and use this as a head, headquarter. And then how do you then, again, the access and the reach from UAE to the rest of the emerging economies, you have, you know, the some, uh, the, almost um, half of the world's population is very close by, and therefore access and sort of moving from here to becoming unicorns to becoming big companies of the future, I think uh, UAE provides a fantastic platform. Now, Rahil, thank you very much for your insight and your advice for small companies today. Uh, this is the SME Souk podcast. This is Rahil Ahmed. He is the CEO of Rackbank. Thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure to be with you. Thank you, Brandy. SME Souk Podcast, brought to you by Rackbank Business. Your business matters.